Welcome once again to the longest running Let's Play series in Wrestling Express. That is Let's Play TNA 2016. And it's time now for episode 23 of this series as we head to Slammiversary, the 14th anniversary of TNA Wrestling. Slammiversary is two weeks away, live on pay-per-view. These are some of the matches that we will see at Slammiversary. The two of the main focuses tonight, focus tonight, as you can tell, are Kurt Angle, uh, wrong segment, are starting to push Kurt Angle's feud with Rey Mysterio and putting that behind us and the getting into the early stages of the Broken Hardys. And also the women's feud that will be headed to the pre-booking list. Um, after this match, I mean after this after this um show rather let me just switch the segments um yeah let's uh, switch the segments and you know jump right into it actually wait before uh before we jump into this <coughs> recently i ran a poll on twitter if you don't follow me uh then i'll give you the cheap plug of at wrestling express with one s um, but if you don't follow me, then you should, because I normally run polls when I'm about to start a new Let's Play series on Twitter, asking the fans, or my followers on Twitter, where should I go next? And the fans chose, and instead of going to ECW in the next series, I'll be heading to the WWE... And it'll be WWE 2010. See, the reason why I picked WWE 2010 is because I've wanted to go back to 2010 and play as WWE to redo the missteps and the missed opportunities that WWE had back in the day. Whether it be the Summer of Punk in 2011, the Nexus in 2010... The first title run for Sheamus, the feud between Sheamus and Triple H, basically the booking of WWE following the departure of, of Shawn Michaels, I want to rebook it all. And that's why the next place I'm going to is WWE 2010. Unfortunately, due to circumstances, well, basically due to the fact that nobody's made a database for 2010 yet, I have to spend time and I have to make the database for myself to use. So if I haven't decided yet uh, what happens when presumably this series ends, if I just run it with three series for the time or I choose a different one to replace TNA and keep running until... Uh, maybe even a temporary series like a how I would book it a short how I would book it uh, to replace TNA meaning this one instead of jumping right into 2010 before the database is ready so I just wanted to make that announcement that the next Let's Play series will be WWE 2010 so stay tuned for that, especially if you're a fan of that, if you were a fan of that, of that period of time, I'm pretty sure you may like my way of booking it better, partially because I'm a smartass and partially because of the fact that it can't be much worse. <laughs> so with that being said and that announcement out of the way, let's jump into this week's episode of TNA Impact. And as as has been the case, if not on Explosion, then a few matches here on the pre-show. Those who not, not are not normally seen on the regular show 
get the opportunity to show off what they can do on the pre-show as Chris Melendez go sorry excuse me uh, as Chris Melendez goes up against Shiloh Johns and of course Chris Melendez gets the victory in the first pre-show match of the night a pretty bad one at that and then the prodigy competes in the second match against Marty Jannetty Basically, this was my way of trying to get Marty Jannetty, uh, trying just to see what skill Marty Jannetty may have in 2016. Unfortunately, or fortunately, uh, I'm glad I put it on the pre-show. Because a 15 entering performance really shows a fall from grace. But either way, the show kicks off with Mick Foley. Mick Foley running down what we can expect in two weeks' time at Slammiversary, the 14th anniversary show of TNA Wrestling. And before he can continue, he is interrupted by Bram and Rob Echoes. And I just realized Bram and Rob Echoes were the two only baby faces in this segment. Everybody else, from Lashley to EC3 to Kurt Angle were... He Sorry, I think I mixed it up. Rob Echoes and Bram were the only heels, and everybody else was baby faces. But either way, a good start to the show. Now we move to the first match, and it's Kyle O'Reilly against Brent Albright. Um, I mean, thus far, his run in TNA has been somewhat... Okay, not somewhat. Very very lackluster very lackluster and unfortunate because I'm a big fan of Kyle O'Reilly but unfortunately I mean he's good on a small scale but may not have been ready for the big big time I stuttered because I started thinking is TNA really the big time but either way <laughs> I'm starting to regret signing Kyle to that written contract uh, a few months ago. But either way, we move to the next segment, and it's the knockouts as they are backstage with Jeremy Borash and Velvet Sky and Madison Rain send out the challenge to the dollhouse one more time at Slammiversary. Six woman tag team, a uh, six man, a uh, six person tag team action as the dollhouse once again goes up against the two thirds of the beautiful people and like the last time when they had Amazing Kong or Awesome Kong as their tag team partner Madison and Velvet tell look right at the camera and say to Terran Terrell, Jade and Marty Bell don't you ladies worry. We'll have a partner. And now we move to the next match, as it is a triple threat match with Tigre Uno going up against Rockstar Spud and Spud. Rockstar Spud and Brandon Watts in an X Division title match. Because. For the last couple of weeks, TJ Perkins has been somewhat trying to upstage Tigre, competing in open challenge matches and defeating, decisively defeating the challengers. So now they're trying to have the champion raise the bar in a triple threat. And of course, Tigre wins and gains his 13th defense, his 13th successful defense of the X Division title and I believe Tigre may be closing in on a year a year as X Division champion but but you gotta wonder now does this mean that TJ Perkins will be featured in a triple threat next week I mean I don't want to say speaking of random action but Speaking of random action, I spliced together a tag team, a tag team match, but let me just say this, picture this, 
Mick Foley's out in the ring. I should have said this in the first segment, but Mick Foley's out in the ring. <clears throat> and he's talking about the world title. And this Bram and Rob Eccles are already in the ring. Bram's saying how he deserves the world title. This brings out Lashley. And Lashley says that he has been the most consistent competitor in TNA and deserves an opportunity to challenge for the X, for the W, for the, bleh, for the TNA World Heavyweight Championship and will decimate anybody who thinks he's wrong just like he's done to everyone that has been put in his path thus far. Mick Foley says, Lashley, you got a good point. And before Mick could continue, Rob Echoes jumps in and tells and looks at Lashley and says, Wins and losses aren't the only thing that make somebody deserving. It's the idea of a marquee. And what makes people more talk, gets people talking more. Rob Echoes versus Rey Mysterio, Bram versus Rey Mysterio, or Bobby Lashley versus Rey Mysterio. It's a no contest. The other two. Bram and myself bring a hell of a lot more to the table than you do. And this brings up the interesting concept of Mick Foley booking a match and putting together an explosion feud of Mark Andrews and Brian Myers against a new tense feud of Lashley and Rob Echoes. And that's how the match came about. Um, Jesse Goddard is now backstage with JB, talking up his match later tonight against Anderson. And how it's his time to prove, his chance to prove just how good he is. Yes, I am in the process of turning Jesse babyface, just like TNA did in real life, partially because, you know, I feel like it's, you know, uh, partially because the babyface roster is somewhat weak, and the other part of it is that it would, you know, give a new breath of fresh air to somebody who's been in the company for a pretty good amount of time at this point. So, I just think it'll help. Uh, speaking of, uh, you can't have an episode of Impact without the knockout. And we had Gail Kim and Madison Rain. And of course, Madison Rain got screwed out of the match by Taryn Terrell. Mm, the actions of Taryn really go without saying, but we don't get the confirmation of, does this mean that the dollhouse accept the beautiful people's challenge for Slammiversary, or is this just a continuation of some rivalry that has been developing between Taryn and Madison in particular? And also, the question has to be begged, where is Gail Kim's challenger going to come from for the Knockouts title? But, either way, that's a question for another day. This question, I mean, is this the, would you call it a question or would you call it an answer to an earlier interview? Well, either way, Jesse Goddard and Mr. Anderson go to a draw via double countout. I mean, double countout, uh, time limit draw, what's the difference? 
Um, well, I mean, I prefer the first match go to a time limit, but whatever. Point is, Jesse Goddard's took the former Heritage Champion to the limit, and in many respects, earned Anderson's respect. And that's why this happened. Jesse Goddard is standing in the ring, frustrated about what happened. And Anderson walks over, shakes his hand. Much to the, much to the surprise of everyone, Jesse accepts and shakes his hand. Now, the question is begged, what happens next? Well, I think you know where this goes. But where the show goes is backstage to Mick Foley's office where Kurt Angle walks in and tells Kurt, I mean, tells Mick, Mick, I never got my rematch. I never got my rematch to face Ramus uh, for the world title. I defended EC3. I partnered up with EC3 at lockdown in lethal lockdown. Our team won. Bram shouldn't even be in the discussion. Lashley can be. EC3 can be. Heck, beer money can be. But the one thing that is missing is that I never got my rematch. And I deserve a one-on-one -on -one opportunity against Rey Mysterio. And Mick looks at him says, You're right, Kurt. I'll address that next week. But for now, you got a main event match to to get ready for get ready for your match go get ready for your match but first we move to Jeff Hardy's return to action since last last month and the mm, pu puzzling and the puzzling actions of his brother, but either way, pretty decent match against Chris Harris. And then speaking of his brother, how this goes is, just imagine, Jeff in the ring, the lights go down, and then when the lights come up, Jeff is standing face to face with his brother, and Matt, jumps Jeff and attacks him beating him down just beating him down and leaves his brother in the ring a broken beaten mess the part that he's broken is just for emphasis now a match that I wanted to do since the beginning and wanted to needed to do before I left Davy versus Kurt just to see how good the match would do and it didn't disappoint but of course of course Kurt got the win what does this mean for Davy Eddie and beer money well, you'll have to find out next week. Because the upward trend continues as we increased our popularity in 18 regions with a final rating of a 74. And as this show, I mean, this season slowly but surely winds down, the one question that should be entering your mind is Have I done what I set out to do in stabilized TNA?
Let me know down in the comment section below. But if you don't want to leave a comment, you can always leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more content just like this that you can only find right here at Wrestling Express. Till next time. Later.